So tonight on the watch bench, I've got a piece that brings back some interesting memories for me. And on the box, you can see I've labeled quickly there G1098. Uh, so what is the significance of that, that number? Well, the G1098 is the name given to a register of stores within a British Army unit. And how do I know this? Well, for nearly 20 years, I actually served as a regular in the British Army. I was an officer. And as part of my duties as an officer, we used to have to validate what was in the stores. So I would ha have found myself counting um, what we called starred items. And those were things that were attractive uh, for people to steal, particularly things like binoculars um, and watches. So we had a thing called a G1098 watch. And inside the box, I've got an example of just the sort of thing that I used to have to account for. And just open the box, and there we are. Let's just arrange this a bit better. Okay, so there you can see. Let's just zoom in a little bit on that and change. There we go. So, as you can see, I've already dismantled the watch. Uh, it is a quartz movement. It belongs to a friend of mine and he brought it to me uh, because the watch had, had stopped working. I've done a quick investigation of it and determined that the movement itself <coughs> is, excuse me, that the movement itself is broken. And being a quartz movement, it's really beyond economic repair, which is another phrase that we used to use frequently in the army. Uh, these quartz movements um, are very difficult to fix and really because of the price of the movement, although it's a nice movement, and I'll come on to look at the movement in a moment, uh, it, it is quite low. It really doesn't make economic sense for me to you know, spend too much time uh, looking at what might be wrong with it. It's quicker just to order replacement movement. So, yeah, we're going to have a good look at this watch, at the movement. Uh, and I want to also talk a little bit about the loom that's on this military watch. As I say, it's a piece, takes me back to my army days. Interestingly, if you see photographs of me uh, in the military, you'll very rarely see me actually wearing one of these watches. And that's because... Uh, we were we were tended to be petrified of losing them uh, because if you lost your watch, um, you got into an awful lot of trouble. Uh, and so people generally either didn't bother to have one issued to them, um, uh, although as an officer, you were entitled to one, as I remember, um, and they would rather wear their own watch and, you know, not have the aggro if uh, that watch got lost. But there we are, um, nice military watch. Just zoom in on that a little bit there. Uh, and we're gonna take a look at that and talk a little bit about the, the loom that's used on the dial. Okay, a close up now of the dial of the watch. I've put the stem back in and um, I'm gonna take the hands off in a minute. I just wanted to show you the, the luminosity of this watch, just turn off the light. And there you go, you can see the loom still still working pretty well. The camera now is having a job focusing, just help it out there a little bit, just turn that back on. Um, but the big deal, or the reasonably large deal rather than the big deal uh, about this loom is of course, it is tritium. And tritium is uh, a radioactive substance with a half-life of about 12 years, I think. Um, so, you know, this watch probably dates to, I don't know, late 80s, early 90s, might even be a little bit later than that. Um, but we have to bear in mind that all of the um, luminosity on the watch is actually delivered via this radioactive substance. And as a watchmaker, uh, we just need to be aware of that. Now, personally, I don't actually work on anything 
that has radium in it. Radium has gamma rays uh, which are nastier than the alpha and beta rays that are emanating out of this watch and radium has a half-life of 1068 years or 1086, can't quite remember. And so yeah, uh, you just need to be aware of it uh, when you're working on a watch like this. Um, because what you don't want to do, what a watchmaker does a lot, uh, because of the optics that you use to look closely at the watch and the focal length of those optics, you end up getting your nose really close to the dial. And as you can see on the dial here, you know, we've got a little lump of something. Now, is that a lump of tritium? If it is, and actually in this case, I don't think it is, um, but often you will see uh, the loomed indices here breaking down. In this case, they're in quite good condition. But when they break down and you get chunks of the radioactive substance there, what you really don't want to do is snort those up your nose, particularly. Even though this watch is, you know, well past its half-life, really snorting radioactive stuff up your nose is never a, really a great idea. So you just need to be aware of it. I've, as I say, I've put the stem back in. Um, we're just going to manipulate the hands now to the 12 o'clock position. Or actually, just to be in line with the second hand is probably better. Um, to make it easier and just do that there so we can actually see it um, just to make it easier to take those hands off so yeah we're going to take the hands off uh, and fit a new movement onto this watch and uh, and also a new glass um, let's just have a look at the glass actually see what i find that um, crystal whatever uh, oh i'm not sure i've got it that's a drama, I must have thrown it away already. Anyway, it was deeply pitted um, and scratched to the extent that it looked pretty frosted. Um, so this watch, when we've got the new movement in it and the new crystal acrylic uh, over the dial there, it's, it's gonna look the bee's knees again. As you can see, the dial is in really good nick. I'm just gonna use a little bit of Rodico to, to clean it up carefully. And then because it's been on a tritium dial, I'll just throw that Rodico away. Um, so yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, Loom is good, uh, but it is uh, tritium based. So we're just gonna be that little bit extra careful with this watch. So there's the movement of the watch. It is a Swiss ETA movement. So as quartz movements go, it is a nice quartz movement. As you can see, the movement even has some jewels um, and in, in most quartz watches that I um, open um, and I try not to work on too many to be frank, uh, you don't see any jewels at all. So it's nice to see these three jewels here. And it also has quite an interesting arrangement for uh, securing the dial. You can see there are two dial feet. There's one here and there's one here. And there's a little sort of hook catch that clips in to the foot that is pushed through the body of the movement. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll have to figure out how they um, uh, come away in, in a moment. Um, the new movement is right here. Ta da! Okay, uh, different color as you can see, but as you can also see. Um, looks pretty similar uh, or it's exactly the same it does have a date complication okay the replacement uh, movement you can't get without a date complication um, although there is no date complication on the dial so well I'm just going to leave that on and that will work merrily underneath the dial there um, so we are going to swap out this uh, movement now and uh, then put the hands back on, uh, clean up the dial. Uh, oh, I found the... Um, and at that exact moment, the video cut out. Uh, so we're back now. And I was just about to say that I found the dial. So let's just see if I can show you that. Not the dial, the, um, the glass um, for this watch. And let's, so let's just see if I can show you this now so we get that in focus. So as you can see, 
you know, pretty beat up. Um, uh, had a lot of use by the looks of things, um, but definitely needs changing. So, yeah, got the new dial. Um, show you that, that's come through. That is it's like the new glass, rather. Um, and yeah, there it is. So, um, from good old cousins. Uh, and so, yeah, gonna change the, swap out this movement now for the new one. Uh, put the hands back on, clean up the dial, throw away the Rodico that I've used to clean up the dial because it's a tritium dial, uh, and then fit the new glass, uh, reassemble the watch, put a battery in it, uh, and then just monitor it for about 24 hours before I give it back to my friend. Uh, there we are. So just putting the hands back on the watch now the movement is uh, the new movement is in and just using this little machine a uh, little tool here for putting the hands on it's just helpful for getting them on nice and squarely um, so once the watch is assembled I'll just give you a quick shot of that and that's another job complete and there it is finished, the G1098 watch. I think it looks it looks quite smart. Um, nice new glass, uh, giving it a little bit of a polish up, but it's, it's not perfect. Um, and new movement, and yeah, that's a, that's a job done. But I do have to say that the watch that I've been working on concurrently with it has really made me think a little bit about you know my my journey perhaps and yeah back in the day as they say um, a while ago I had a reason to wear something like this um, as I say uh, I was a military engineer in the army and went all over the place and when I look at this watch compare it to the watch that I've been working on you know it's kind of black and grey and functional and sombre and it's got a okay it's a good movement for a quartz movement but at the end of the day it's a it's kind of this dead tick of a soulless quartz movement it's a it's a functional dark piece for what is at the end of the day a, a pretty dark business I think so to contrast that then with what I have been working on, um, which is just absolutely lovely, um, is quite interesting. So yeah, this in contrast, oops, oops, we don't come back together here. There we go. This in contrast, I think is where my heart now wishes to reside. So it's a size 16 Elgin pocket watch um, and just look how, I mean look at the romance in there and look at the thing on the left. You know it kind of says it all. Um, the object, the Elgin pocket watch on the on the right here, that was, you know, made uh, Victorian times, Boer War sort of. Uh, it's an American watch, um, but it's uh, 1890, maybe the start of the 20th century. Um, but just look how beautiful that is. So yeah, interesting journey. Um, God willing, uh, with <laughs> well, sound too depressing, but with whatever time I've got left. Um, I, I hope it's longer rather than shorter, but none of us ever know. Um, uh, I'm going to spend, uh, I feel myself wanting to spend, or hoping to spend, uh, a lot more time working on stuff like you see on the right and letting go of, you know, all that the stuff on the left stands for. So yeah, interesting. Um, 
My friend will get his G1098 watch back though, so that's good. Um, and I'm going to continue my work with the stuff on the right. And with that, I think I'll pack up for tonight and um, yeah, get this cleared away and do something else.